It's become a wide open race since the presumed front runner, PG Sittenfeld, was arrested on bribery charges. He is accused of selling his votes to a developer. Sittenfeld has repeatedly said he is innocent, and now he is asking a judge to dismiss all charges against him. Sittenfeld is one of three council members charged with corruption this year. Well, that is shifting up the entire makeup of city council. Two of those council members are Democrats. All three replacements are Republicans. And that while the county turns blue. Courier reporter Chris Wetterick sat down with Josh Burt, Pert, Burton to talk politics. Kyla, thanks for having us. This is Josh Burton. He's a political consultant. Josh, uh, this was an eventful election year. Hamilton County Republicans, they've kind of had a, a few tough election cycles as the county has trended more democratic recently. What do you think that the Republicans can do to kind of turn around and compete in an urban county like this one? Thank you, Chris, uh, for that great question. I think one of the biggest things that Republicans can continue to do and they, they should be doing is getting out into the respective communities across Hamilton County. Um, citizens tend to uh, vote for people that they have a relationship with and someone that they can identify with and someone that they can get to know, uh, especially with you know such microcosms around our county. Uh, name ID is super important, especially if you're judicial uh, and if you're running in partisan races, you know, getting to understand your party, the base of your party, uh, and then raising money. That's a huge part of running, especially in a competitive county like Hamilton County. What do you think the most frustrating misconception is that people have about politics and people who work in politics? I would say the biggest misconception is, is that somehow we hate each other or that we don't get along with each other. Um, people will watch the talking heads on the news scream at each other. Uh, they'll see fights on social media between people. And for those of us who work in politics, I have plenty of friends who are Democratic operatives, uh, friends who are Democrats that we just, we don't really talk about politics. And if we do, it's very respectful. We don't hate each other for it, that we, we keep audience with people who have difference of opinion and we don't live in such a monolithic world. I think that's pretty frustrating. Uh, pretty frustrating thing for me is that they don't think that we get along. We all do. And we try to at least reflect that to other people. You've worked with a ton of candidates in your time in this business, Josh. What do you think, what are some of the qualities that make a successful uh, candidate overall and a successful candidate uh, in terms of fundraising as well? Yeah, I think the hustle, having the hustle is the biggest part. Willing to go out there every day, putting your, well, first off, you know, making the, uh, making the, the choice to run for office. That's a big, that's a big choice. Uh, and when you do that, you have to be prepared to raise the money. And that means talking with your sphere of influence first and then getting to know donors uh, who, who technically, you know, they buy into what you believe in, right? Um, and then the third part is being able to go talk to anyone and everyone possible uh, in your community uh, and having that hustle. Hustle is the biggest part of running for office. And then lastly, this is a kind of a, can be a feast or famine business. What's next for you, do you think? Yeah, so again, we're gonna continue working with great candidates, uh, whether here in Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland, or across the country. Uh, and then we also enjoy working with private businesses and doing advertising. Josh Burton, thank you very much for joining us this morning.